What up unicorns, Eric Abram here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I set up my design file. This could be done with Adobe XD, this could be done for Sketch, this could be done for Figma. Whatever the design tool that you use the most, or the one that you like the most, this strategy can help you guys stay organized and have your project files looking super nice I'm talking about pristine. So when you go on vacation, people are not asking like, hey, where's this, where's that? It's in the file, guys, just open it up. I got everything all situated and straight. So let's jump on the computer and let's get into it. Let's go. All right, guys, so this is sort of how I'm, this is not sort of, but this is how I set up my, my design files whenever I go into a new job or if I'm doing things on a personal level, I'm doing things for clients, whatever, whatever it is, I like to set up my design files like this. And I take inspiration from a startup I used to work at um, a couple years back, where they kind of had a similar setup, but I took it, I modified it just a little bit more. So what I do is I come in here and I make all these different sections here. So I have like um, the cover, which is which encompasses this item here, we'll go over that in a second. But then underneath that, I have like overview, flow map, project components, and project components are like those things that, not, that those things that are not in the design system quite yet. They will be, and they should be, <laughs> but for right now they're not because um, we couldn't. Let's say we couldn't find anything in our design system. We need something that's more custom. So we'll make that. We'll make it a component. We'll put it in the project components, and then later once the project is done or maybe even halfway through, we can add it to the uh, design system file. So that way, everybody, and anyone can access it and use the things that I just created, right? So that's kind of how we structured that. So we go, let's go through the, go through the pages real quick. I'm stuttering like a crazy person, but here we go. <laughs> so overview, so cover, let's start with cover. So cover, we break it down like this, where we have like, our research, our design, our testing, and then like ready for dev. This thing here just helps like kind of high level see this kind of stage that the designer is actually in when they're actually doing design. So if I'm like doing like research, I'm kind of like just trying to figure out what I'm trying to make, just trying to figure out what I'm trying to do, right? And then I can go into like that design phase that might include like sketches, wireframing, high fidelities, whatever that encompasses. That's in like the design section, right? Then I go into like the testing part. I'm, I'm basically putting together a prototype. I'm getting ready to test my ideas with actual users. I'm, I'm setting that up, I'm planning, I'm scheduling interviews, all that stuff. And then I have like ready for dev. Ready for dev is like, I went through all the stuff, I did all the planning, I did all the testing, I made all the adjustments. Now it's ready for developers to actually build this thing. So high level, if I actually go into this project and kind of see like the cover page, like I, I, I can kind of see like what stage the project is in. Not only does this help me, but helps other people who might come in after me as a designer or might help my, my project manager, might help my developers, whatever. And then from here, I break it down like the project name, I might throw in the how might we. And another important thing is like looking at like the team members. So I might break it down like, like the lead designer, that would be me. And then like, there might be like another designer on the project and that might be somebody else. Then you can go, you can add your project manager on there. You can also add like your developers if you want to, right? So that's kind of how I would break this down. If you want to go ahead, you can add a, you're like, maybe you have like a Slack channel or uh, maybe like a team channel that you want to link out to where people actually can go in and talk and ask questions. That might be a place where you can put a Slack channel. Maybe you have a Slack channel to call like, you know, UX UI or UX UR, whatever, whatever it is, you know, project, project manager, whatever your Slack channels call that you will receive, like um, any feedback, whatever you can add that in, or they can ask a question. They can actually go to the Slack channel, ask you a question there. And also I'll put the, uh, the project date. The reason why we put the project date is just to make sure that people are sort of staying accountable <laughs> and recognizing like, hey, this project has been, we've been doing this for like the past six months or the past whatever, whatever. So that way people can kind of know like this project has been going on for a very long time. This just kind of helps that. And then on the side, we have like the project image. Basically this could be like a screenshot. This could be 
anything you need to be to kind of like show like this project is um it's, it could be the current stats it could be wireframe it could be whatever this is all right so let's let's go through these let's actually go through all the all the different sections here so we have a cover like i said before and then we have the overview section basically the overview is talking about the overview of the project any problems or pain points that you have covered that you want to kind of want to put in here you can put like as a user you can kind of put like some user stories in here if you want to um then you can come into flow map and then you can add like uh, some comments in here you got some arrows in here conditioning some paths and like screen sizes i mean screen numbers basically this will help you kind of put together like maybe like a user flow or wire flow to kind of help you understand the path that the user is going to, that the user is going to take project components like i said before this is where like potential um you know the design design system components might live for now so you can link them out later then i put like a space here just just to like just to make it look better uh, that way users can that way people can kind of like find this as they need a little a little quicker and then I break it down like discovery. So discovery is basically like things that I'm trying to figure out. I'm just trying to like do do a couple experiments, trying to really understand. I'm not really designing, but I'm more like just thinking through. This might be like where the wireframes go. Might be where the sketches go. This might be where like some some uh, competitive analysis might go. As I might get some inspiration, whatever. This could give, live here as well. You're just kind of discovering different things you want to actually do with the with the new feature to try to build. The other thing that really helps is see this blue bar here. This is going to help you stay organized and really kind of organize your flows. I've been in some places where like there's just like screens everywhere. There's screens all over the place. What this helps you do is you're able to just like come over here make a copy. Actually, I just made a copy. Let me delete that one. Then you can now you can kind of see like how this can really help you keep your file organized as you're building, keep your screens organized as you're building this. The next I have like another space, like I said before, just to keep this uh, easier for people to find. Then you have your design section. So the design section, once again, has the same blue bar, but this is where I'm gonna actually start designing, designing, like really get into the details of like this particular work. This might be the work that I might show to a stakeholder. This might be the work I might present, um, you know, in a deck or whatever. This will just this this will live here, and then I need to put another space here. Let me just do that real quick. Hit the space bar. Okay, cool. Critique as async critique. Basically, asynchronous mean like I don't have to be on a call with you. I could put like the screens in here. I could talk about this is what I could be more intentional like what I want feedback on. I can just send a link out, and then people can come in here and they can put comments in right here. So I can come in here, leave a comment. I can attach it to somebody. They can, they can, um, you know, at me. That way, I can get that. And if I have um, email set up, I can have it triggered to an email for me. Or if I have Slack set up, I can have it ping me in Slack. So that's pretty cool. So that's like an async critique one. Then I have another space in here. Then I have a section for prototype. The prototypes have dates on them. The reason why that is because. I might be doing multiple tests at once and I might have multiple things going on. So I wanna put a date on my prototypes. Actually, you wanna put a date on pretty much everything that you do. So I failed to mention that. Like if you have a like, design file here, put a date at the end of it. Discovery, put a date at the end of it. For, de for development, put a date at the end of it. So when people come into your design file, they can kind of stay up to date with you, no pun intended, on what you're actually working on. So that way people are like, when, when was this created? When was this created? Like, it's here, it has a date on it. And here's the version one, two, three, four, and five. But also think about it too. Like you might have, this might be like a total big, this might be a big project. So you might have like smaller features within this. So being able to like label this and put dates on it will help you stay organized if you're coming to, uh, like if you're coming into this file and it's super big. Uh, next thing, another space. Then we have the for, for development phase. This is basically for a development team, for the engineering team. These are like the final designs. These are things that need to go out and get developed. And you will, basically what you would do is you would take the work that you've done from the design section. You can either move it down here or you can copy and paste it down here. Um, either either one works, works okay, it's whatever. I like to do, I like to, Sometimes I like to make a copy and put it down here 
and put a date on it. So therefore, if I'm doing, if I want to go back and do more iterations, I'm not iterating on files that, that the devs are currently working on. I'm going to iterate on the design file that uh, that one has already been approved and delivered, but I can iterate and add more things to it as like a V2. So what I would do is I would probably make a copy of this, call it for dev, and this would be my V2. So therefore my V1 is in development, my V2 is being currently worked on. So that way you can kind of version control yourself and that way you don't overwrite your work that you're doing. Another space, and then last thing is like the archive section or the graveyard. Basically archive is basically the work that you're no longer doing or work that is no longer in flight, but you might have some things in there that you might need or want to reference. So therefore, if I did some design exploration or some design work, I could bring it to the archive section, or there might be some things that are like experimental, totally dead, but I kind of like some of the stuff that I did, but I'm not really using it. So I might use it later. That might go into the graveyard section. Things you know that won't come back to life and if you come back to life it's a zombie but the archiving situation is like there's some things in here that we might come back to but i don't want it in my current workflow so i'll bring it to the archive section and so that is pretty much how i uh break down the work break down my my design file i'm gonna bring what i want to do is for you guys i'm gonna make a copy of this I'm gonna put a link in the description or somewhere where you guys can access this so you can download it and use it in your workflow today. All the stuff will be in here for you guys. So therefore, um, you can make any changes, you can make any updates, you can add anything you want to this to make it your own. But for now, you have a good starting place. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you guys learned something today and I hope that you use it. And if you do use it, let me know in the comments below, like, hey, I like, really like your template. I use it, it helped me out, whatever. If you hated it, put that in also in the comments. You know, it, it's all good for the algorithm, right? All right, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Hope you um, can take some from that and learn something from it, like I said before. Um, this is something that I, I use in my current job, in my current projects, they kind of help me stay um, sort of on track with what I'm doing, help me really stay organized. Uh, this type of file I've used at um, past startups, I used at Wells Fargo, I used at my, some other places. So therefore, um, it works guys, it definitely does. And a lot of people do adapt it. You'll be surprised how many, you'd be surprised when you go into an organization how like unorganized the design files are. I'm not saying all organizations, but most of them that I've worked at, have been pretty unorganized <laughs> and this is just a good way to like really bring value to your team and also really help you uh, really help you to stay on track with what you're developing not to develop it but really stay on track with what you're designing and stay organized so if you go on vacation if you take a day off whatever somebody can come in right after you and pick up where you left off and that is a beautiful thing you do not want to bottleneck anything and cause a problem all uh, right guys and so um like, comment, subscribe. Uh, make sure you uh, go to uglyunicorns.com, download the template file. Wherever, wherever link I have below, go to that, download the template file, use it in your day-to-day -day process, and I hope you guys enjoy it. On to the next one, all right, guys? And like I always say, don't just be a unicorn. Be an ugly unicorn.